Welcome back to 8701. Um, our second part of the chapter in QCD is on elastic electron proton scattering. Um, so elastic or uh, electron proton scattering in general has a long history uh, going back into the 1960s. Um, you know, very famous examples are the MIT SLAC or SLAC MIT experiment, which led to the Nobel Prize in Physics for Jerry Friedman, Henry Kendall, and um, Richard Taylor in 1990. Um, and the most recent and highest energetic electron positron experiments were conducted at DAISY in Hamburg at the so called Hera Ring. Um, and uh, we'll go back into those experiments. They are famous for not just elastic electron positron uh, scattering, but inelastic and deep inelastic electron positron, positron scattering, which is going to be subject of future lectures. Um, what we're trying to do here, even, you know, you might still wonder why this is topic of a QCD lecture. Um, what we're trying to do is study the structure of protons. And the way to look at this is in this uh, Feynman diagram, so we're using this photon here to probe into the structure of the proton. Um, you know, we can start from, from this scattering process, which we you know, already calculated and we derived the mod scattering cross-section formula. Um, but we really wanna consider this proton now as a blob. In elastic scattering, we are not destroying the proton, so we leave the proton intact in the scattering process. We do know that the proton is not a point length particle. So if you wanna now study the proton, we have to take into account that it's built out of constituents and that it has an extension. It's not point like anymore. And one way to do this is by analyzing the Fourier transform of the charge density functions. Remember the photon couples to charged particles. And so when we use the photon to probe a proton, we probe the charge distribution inside the proton. So we build a Fourier transform of the charge distribution, um, and uh, in, in, and and then can extend the cross section uh, from a point-like cross section via this Fourier transform of the charge distribution. Great. In electron positron scattering, there is another point. It's not just the extension of the proton, but also the fact that the proton carries recoil. And so we uh, need to use two form factors in order to describe the cross-section um, fully. Um, so let's have a look at the amplitude. Again, we can just start from where we left off with the electron um, positron scattering or electron, electron muon scattering and write down our matrix element and just now for the proton. What we do here is we modify the vertex of the proton uh, and the modification is parameterized in those two factors. Describing, describing the uh, the cross section or the matrix element the amplitude with two form factors. One, which just looks like a modification of our spin half particle. You remember there's this gamma factor, and then, you know, this is, is going to be a number. And the, the other one is a little bit more complicated. There is a, a Pauli matrix here and another number, and it's normalized by the mass of the proton. All right, so this is just the parameterization. We haven't done much physics here. We have just parameterized uh, the distribution. Um, if you then use this, we can, as I just described, um, calculate the cross section again, using those, this very same parameterization and get to this formula here in the laboratory frame. Um, this looks rather complicated, but if you, uh, Go back to uh, our form factor definitions and set this one to zero and this one to one, you get back and the same here, you set get back to our uh, mod scattering result, which we had before. So really extended the discussion to extended, extended objects and considering the charge distribution and also the recoil in the proton. So this is great. Um, Historically, so this is not a new idea. This has been done uh, for generations. Historically, the parameterization was done slightly different. And so we introduced a linear combination of those form factors. And those are typically referred to as the electric and the magnetic four factors, the GE and GM. This formula here, and this is just algebra going from the previous formula to this, is called the Rosen-Blues, Rosen-Blues, 
um, cross-section formula. Right, so this is just if you find this in his in, 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 in particle physics booklets or nuclear physics booklets, this is what's meant by this. The only thing we did here is <coughs> extended the Rosen the mod scattering formula using extended objects, extended charge distribution to the Rosen Rosenberg formula. All right, but we have done that by using the Fourier transform of the charge distribution. So if we now measure the cross section we can infer the charge distribution of the proton. And with that, the radius, the charge radius of the proton. This has been done. And we find that the RMS, the root mean square of the proton charge is 0.81 femtometers. Uh, so that's the charge. And this is this measured charge is still today uh, a hot topic in particle physics because these measured distributions do not quite agree with uh, the theory predictions. So you see this here parameterized for this value of the proton charge, the theory and the global fit to the data don't quite agree. You would have to go to slightly higher values of the proton radius in order to have the theory agree with the experiments. Uh, so I leave it here. The next lecture now, I, I split this lecture in two parts, the elastic and the inelastic scattering. The next lecture will be on inelastic scattering where we've been breaks the proton apart and learn about the structure of the proton.